it's a real honor to be here uh, in front of you. And uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm sorry I can't be there in person with you. I would uh, love to be there in, in Bratislava. I was actually really looking forward to it when you invited me, Thomas. Uh, but, uh, okay, maybe next time then. So um, we'll have to do with, with, with what options we have. But, yes, uh, as already mentioned, I'm the um, head of digital construction for the uh, Ministry of Economic Affairs and Communications in Estonia. And uh, before I dive into uh, the digitization measures we are taking in, in Estonia, uh, I thought I'd give you a quick uh, kind of update about Estonia itself. So we've been called the most digital society in the world, and we have most of our state services online already, uh, 99% of them actually. Uh, we use dig digital signatures every day. A lot of Estonians, I think, have already forgotten how to sign uh, on physical paper. Uh, you just use your uh, phone or your computer and tap a few uh, keys. Uh, we, have, uh, we do our taxes online. We, you can get your doctor's prescriptions online. And, uh, and yeah, you can vote online. And when it comes to the built environment, then we are also, um, we have a fully digital building permit service. And um, <clears throat> this was already established in 2015. Um, the only problem is that when we, when we started with this uh, and we transitioned to a fully digital process, we modeled the digital process after the paper-based process. So there's still, you know, although it's fully digital, uh, we are still submitting, uh, you know, uh, PDFs, uh, drawings, uh, zip files, uh, stuff like that. So, so there's room for improvement, and this is exactly what we are doing. But I thought it would be interesting to show you uh, what happened during the, uh, the outbreak of the pandemic. Um, as we already have a fully digital process for building permits, it was very interesting to see how the building registry performed uh, when when a state of emergency was declared in Estonia in March of this year. And as you look at this graph, which compares uh, the usage, um, the visitor count uh, on the website uh, and compares it to the same period the year before, you can notice that there's a slight drop, about 15 to 17 percent. But when we look at the number of applications that were actually submitted and the number of building permits that were issued, there, to our surprise, actually, it was higher than the year before. So the country was on lockdown. People were stuck at home. But thanks to the fact that we had a fully digital service, it didn't stop the process. And it even increased, as you can see from the, from the top graph, that we had a lot more applications than we had the year before when everything was working normally. And the only explanation is that people were, you know, working at home and they started clearing out their desks, kind of their virtual desks, and uh, and seeing, well, I have this application I've been meaning to uh, submit, but I haven't had time for it or whatever. And they started doing this from home. And this clearly, I think, shows how important it is to digitize uh, processes. And, you know, the world is changing. It's already changed. So we don't know what's going to happen next. So you might wonder if, uh, you know, we already have digital services online, uh, everything's running great, so where's the problem? Well, the problem is the productivity of the industry. So here's a an, uh, picture from the McKinsey uh, report uh, comparing uh, productivity of the construction sector with other sectors, and we are quite low in the construction sector, almost the lowest. And... There are several reasons for that. Uh, in my view, one of the most important reasons is uh, the lack of digi digitization. And if you compare also the charts and graphs that show various levels of digitization in different sectors, construction is unfortunately again at the bottom. Uh, it's not the only reason, of course. Uh, the bigger problem with the productivity of the industry is, uh, or the cause of the low productivity is the inherent fragmentation of the sector. Uh, if you think about the building life cycle, it is very long. It lasts uh, 60, 80, even more years. Uh, you have, uh, you know, designers, uh, contractors, subcontractors, 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 
maintenance guys, users, clients. There are so many stakeholders involved. And this is what makes this sector very hard, actually, to, uh, to digitize and to have a holistic view. But we are trying. And our aim at the Ministry of Economic Affairs uh, and Communications in Estonia is to have um, is to increase the productivity of the uh, construction sector uh, three times by 2030. Uh, this might sound very ambitious, but it's kind of getting us on the uh, level of uh, average level of the EU actually. So we are below the average right now. And you think think about how the government can actually influence the whole sector, how we can nudge the sector into a kind of a different way of uh, a new era of productivity, let's put it that way. Uh, you have, of course, the classical um, tools in the government toolbox, legislation, of course, our ministry is responsible for that. Uh, guiding education in Estonia, most of higher education is paid um, by the, the public sector. Uh, so it's free of charge, more or less. Uh, we can, you know, uh, make make orders what kind of skills uh, will be needed in the future. Then there's process improvement, uh, all, all kinds of, you know, support programs and stuff like that. But in case of Estonia and our e-government, I think it has proven that there's one more very efficient toolbox, which is much, much faster than the other classical tools. And this is digitization and creating a, uh, environments for secure and reliable data exchange. And in construction, that's what we are calling now the construction platform. And the vision of this platform is to enable lossless exchange of standardized and trustworthy data between all stakeholders throughout the building life cycle. So data is really at the heart of everything. So, and we, and if you think about this fragmented nature of our industry, uh, then connecting the stakeholders and ensuring a kind of uniform flow of data is really something that the government uh, should do because the government is always a player, a stakeholder in practically every step of the building life cycle from planning, design, construction, uh, usage, handover, maintenance, demolition, recycling. In every phase, you need approvals, you need uh, permits, stuff like that. So information is flowing through the government systems and that's why we are really focusing uh, from the government side to push uh, this view or this uh, approach. And of course, better data means better decisions. And with this platform, we aim to make BIM business as usual. And our government process is even more transparent, even more efficient. But the most interesting part is that we can add new digital products and services to this platform. And to explain this platform in a different way, I, uh, I have a graph here. Uh, which shows you kind of the traditional uh, build-up of, uh, of an IT system. So if we're talking about the building registry services, we have the database layer at the bottom, services in the middle, and a user interface at the top. And we are now expanding the existing building registry service. We are creating utility network services next to it. And we are using a whole new IT architecture. So it's focusing on microservices. So all of these services are communicating with each other through APIs. Uh, we are adding BIM models to the process. We are creating a digital twin. And we are also, this means we're adding more and more databases, but it doesn't mean we're creating one super database. We are creating a distributed network. So, and this is part of, of already the uh, Estonian um, e-government uh, infrastructure, which is called XROAD, which enables the safe and reliable exchange of data between different servers and databases. So we don't have to put everything in one basket. We can keep them kind of independent, but we ensure that the communication is flawless between them. And we're also going uh, further into the building life cycle, so into the planning phase, into the zoning phase and the process there. And now the last pink parts, uh, the services you see at the end of both ends of this uh, slide, these are the private sector services that we hope to have on the platform. And we had a digital construction hackathon two weeks ago, and we already saw there a very large interest in um, connecting through APIs to these government services. 
and a potential to offer new services on the platform. And essentially, the service layer, this forms the e-construction platform. And the platform itself is not a, some kind of huge system. It's actually a uh, set of agreements between uh, players. So we're talking about having a common architecture so the IT services can communicate with each other, a common language so we can exchange data, and of course, a common philosophy that we use each other's data um, at all. And uh, yeah, this is another uh, slide just to uh, illustrate the construction platform, how it uh, connects uh, services and data, and we're using uh, our existing infrastructure in the e-government. And the e-construction platform is also uh, an access to the digital twin. Now, what is the digital twin? When you look it up on Wikipedia, it says it's a digital replica of a living or non-living physical entity. Well, it's more like a digital mirror of the physical world. And if we're talking about a true digital twin, then we also need real-time data to, to have these real-time feedback loops between the digital and the physical uh, to manage these assets. So in the end, we're really talking about uh, most of all the management of assets. But uh, you should never underestimate the power of visualization. Data is, of course, at the core and heart of everything. But as long as people are involved in the process, we are stereoscopic beings and visual beings, and we still need visualization. And that's why we started the project uh, in Estonia already uh, in 2018 to kind of bring all this data into one visual uh, format. And that is what we're calling the, the 3D digital twin. And we, uh, we analyzed business benefits. We took a look at technical uh, aspects, how we can do it, focusing on open source solutions, open source software. Uh, we created a proof of concept. And now we are in the development phase when we're actually bringing all of this data together. So you might say that the digital twin already exists, but it's in different databases. Uh, it's, it's a bit siloed. Um, so we're kind of bringing all of that data together from uh, from different uh, government services. So this is just a few quick screenshots of, uh, of the system we have uh, already in development. So it covers whole of Estonia. Um, the buildings have been modeled uh, on this screen uh, at LOD1 level. We're going in more detail, but this is using the building registry data. And it also allows us to see where we have gaps in our data because not all buildings are extruded in height. And that's because we don't have the proper height information there. You can see utility networks on a 2D level, but we're transitioning to a 3D um, capability there as well. Uh, it'll take time, of course, to map everything in 3D. Uh, you can look at, for example, geology uh, data. And this is all got coming from the land board um, uh, registry or database, uh, not the building registry. Uh, we also have connected uh, the road department's uh, database with the different uh, roads, uh, hydrants, uh, stuff like that. You can do basic measurements here, of course, and this is all running mm, the front end on Cesium, which is an open source solution. And, uh, and you can also select areas which you want to download and then use in either Revit or your design software uh, to, to kind of build something new. And for vegetation, we're using point crowds to uh, visualize them because it's very hard to model trees and stuff like that. So, so yeah. Um, and this is another use, use case where we uh, put uh, the no-fly zone uh, areas around Tallinn into 3D. And just to show how what kind of different uh, data layers we can put up there. And, uh, well, I have a lot to talk about. Very little time to do it. Um, another interesting project we have is BIM-based permit checks. And this we hope to launch uh, in, the next, uh, in the middle of next year. So we are going to implement BIM models into the building permit process. Um, and this means we're going to apply automated uh, checks, um, both rule-based and uh, uh, algorithmic checks, which means that we are analyzing the model. We are, we are uh, looking at the geometry. For example, we are measuring the distance between fire escapes to see uh, where the uh, where there are gaps, where it's too far. Uh, we can visualize that on the model. Um, here is a quick video that shows um, you, how it works. It's all in a browser. You, you select an IFC, and then you can, um, you can analyze the model like you would in any uh, application. But our goal is to make it as 
you know, KISS, keep it stupid simple, and to make it really intuitive to users. But I think when you compare 2D plans to 3D uh, models, then uh, there is definitely uh, an advantage or an upper hand to use uh, 3D models because they are more intuitive. Um, for example, 2D drawings are with people who are not specialists in this. It's very hard to read them. But 3D models, it's a m much easier. And you can see the surrounding environment. And we have here nine checks that we tested, uh, looking at, yeah, like Fire Escape, where you can, if there's a possibility for somebody to fall off somewhere, uh, you can compare materials. Uh, and it's possible to use this also for, um, uh, especially when we're talking about accessibility. For example, can you access everything with a wheelchair? Um, you can just send, you know, this virtual wheelchair into the model and they can go through every nook and cranny of the model and make sure it's, uh, it's accessible. And this is something that is very difficult to do manually and it's very laborious. So our goal is to really decrease the amount of these uh, very actually boring technical checks and tedious technical checks um, that humans do right now and give that to the machines and leave the important aspects like aesthetics, um, and, and overall kind of, uh, 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 objective of, of this, uh, new, new development in the physical environment lead these important decisions to the, to the humans. But, uh, we aim to really, uh, speed up the process, uh, of the billing permit. Okay. So, um, uh, one more, uh, project I quickly want to mention, uh, I know I'm running short on time already, uh, is, uh, is a classification project because as I mentioned already, we need a common language. So we started in 2018 to also find a common language to describe the built environment that is suitable for the digital age. And we ended up already now with establishing a, uh, a consortium sort of, uh, which is called Construction Classification International Collaboration. Uh, so it's a collaboration between uh, Czechia, uh, uh, Denmark, Estonia, uh, and it's an open collaboration, and we're using uh, a classification called CCI, which is based on ISO standards and derived a lot from uh, already the work done by the Danes in the Conneco system. But this is something that is now international. It is open, and we have a core that you can use, uh, and you can extend that core based on your national needs. But the idea is that we really try to come out of these national silos because there's no borders in the digital world. So, and you're very open, open to join this as well. And uh, yeah, what we really need in the industry and to make this digital transition happen is collaboration between public and private sector. And I think uh, it's, it's the government or the, or the state that should kind of uh, try to lead and support the industry because we have a lot of companies who are, who are already using um, technologies like BIM, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, in construction, in design, in a little bit in maintenance as well, uh, VDC, virtual design and construction, stuff like that. And we want to be there from the government side supporting all of this. So you can use BIM models to also apply for the building permit. You don't have to send us drawings anymore. You can use the same model that you're using in construction, in design, to also communicate with the government. And that data will then be available to others through the government systems. So yeah, we are we are very open. And uh, just to end off, uh, we also have an e-residency program, and you're all welcome to become an e-resident of Estonia to enjoy all our digital services. And you can't vote, but you can establish a company, you can pay taxes, and uh, and you can do your business in Estonia while being there in Slovakia. So this is a really uh, good opportunity if you want to expand your reach globally. Uh, in this, uh, you know, uh, pandemic era that we're we're going through right now. With that, I thank you for your attention, and uh, back to you, Thomas.